He makes lame lesbian jokes so much, I'm starting to think he really does enjoy the shame of it. And, and I've been non-consensually participating in this kink, haven't I? Oh, oh god, oh god, it makes too much sense! Okay, so if you've been tuned into hip hop news this year, you probably knew this one was coming. For those unaware, basically No Name was getting heat for including a verse from Jay Electronica for the lead single of her new album, after it had been pretty well known that he's on the anti-Semitism train. Basically, he'd had some lyrics that kinda do the rhetorical I'm not touching you game where they can't explicitly say the meaning behind their insinuations cause they know it would look bad. I bet you a Rothschild I get a bang for my dollar. The synagogue of Satan want me to hang by my collar. Like, with this lyric, uh, the Rothschilds are a rich Jewish banking family that he mentions right before talking about a synagogue of Satan, a phrase from the Bible apparently meant to point out Jews who sold out their people for money, essentially calling them fake Jews for doing so. But, well, his hotep belief logic jumbles up and conflates things to basically say that since white Jews will typically have more money per capita than black people, that has to mean that white Jews are the evil Jews and the black people are the good Jews. Now, see, that's not really understandable or comprehensible to the average person who comes across a line like this without context. Because the point is to couch the deeper beliefs about Jewish people being evil in sort of, if you know you know, dog whistles that someone not keyed in would recognize. And trust me, I legit gave a chance and listened through his spiritual leader's talks, cause hey, sometimes people do misinterpret people's words in the heat of a moment, but nah, as I was listening, it came down to the same thing every other conspiracy nut does. Take a couple of real perceivable problems and scapegoat another minority, usually Jewish people, as the super villain keeping you down. Now, I will say in this instance, people were a little quick to assume with this line. Saw the royal family and have to get my clout back in a heart of nice bridge, pulling bunnies out top hats. See, some people thought he was saying the Roth family there, as in the Rothschilds, uh, the rich Jewish family, that he actually is on record as dating one of their daughters. Which, actually, doesn't that throw all of his anti-Jewish lyrics in a new light now? Uh, after all these mealy mouth lines about rich Jewish people being evil, turns out he was literally having an affair with one while she was dating someone else at the time. So, uh, is this really about Jewish people taking over the world? Or are you just sour because your meal ticket didn't choose you? Now, the reason I especially bring this up is that in response to the backlash for having him on the song and all the swirling accusations of anti-Semitism being sanctioned, No Name essentially hand waved any criticism by saying, well, if you think I included a dude on my project that spews anti-Jewish rhetoric, I don't care, you can go listen to someone else if that bothers you. And I'm not exaggerating, that, 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 that's pretty much what she said. It's that mode of thinking that's like, well, he's a fellow black man, so even if they say wrong-headed, ignorant shit out of spite against other minorities, we're rooting for everyone black, right? So we can't criticize anything they do or else we're letting the white man win. And sure, people were giving her an especial amount of shit for including him for what's essentially his verse that had the dumb shit in it, but I think it holds weight. Like, let's keep it a buck. If someone like Tom McDonald showed up in her studio and laid down some shit like, no, I'm not racist, I just believe in the preservation of whiteness against the degenerate culture that believes in race, there wouldn't be no, well, if you don't like it, just don't listen. She'd have more than enough incentive to think about exactly why people had a problem with it. Oh, but it's a black dude promoting the hatred of other minorities, so it's cool, right? And that's what's especially disappointing here, because No Name's music paints her as a seemingly pretty thoughtful person, someone at least actively aware of the complex dynamics of the modern world. So it puts me in this inevitable mode of thinking where it's like, okay, you either don't realize that black people can be bigoted to other minorities, which makes you look naive as fuck, or, or you are cool with what he's saying about Jews, and you're just too much of a pussy to admit it, which would just make you look dumb as fuck, so. Just some fuck boy 85 will come run up and press me. It's all a hoax quite simple, a joke like Zelensky. Oh, uh, are we dissing the Ukrainian president now? Wasn't that whole deal that he was trying to keep his country from being invaded by fucking Putin and his oligarchs? Well, damn, it, just when you thought anti-Semitism made your beliefs look bad, fucking look out, black hoteps are riding for Russian imperialism now. Well, I guess I could see them bonding. Especially over those Jewish scapegoats they both just love blaming all their problems on. So, uh, getting on the mainstream guys about bad lyrics is usually the routine, but every now and then I gotta call out some of the underground cats for the shit they be talking. Cause look, I understand the underground mentality is like, oh, we're real artists, we don't conform to the standards and practices of the mainstream, man. But sometimes there's like a reason why they do things a certain way. I will not be a sound check. And like, if you don't do sound checks at your live sets, they're, they're going to sound like shit. 
And this isn't me being pedantic here. Different rooms require different sound setups because of the space the sound is traveling in. And with how awkward this dude typically raps, he's gonna need as much sound clarity as possible. Could be at the local greasy spoon or Szechuan establishment. Courtyard by Marriott bathroom blowing marijuana through the vents. I'm just saying, don't complain when no one's going to your shows anymore because they all sound like, Yo, this is bloody the place to be. I better set the show too hard to rap on the And the hook of the song just sounds like an ode to being unprofessional. Every victory ferret. Every, every live show forget the lyric. He's treating it like a point of pride to not remember how your songs go when you're in front of your fans on stage. I feel like he's trying to come off like some bold journeyman who's just got his own way of doing things. But between skipping sound checks and barely making the effort to memorize your own songs, he sounds more like just a lazy asshole. I'm loyal, bitch. I got yay over by You know, in this modern age, I think we're truly starting to understand the difference between honor bound friendships and, and enabling a cult leader. Well, any more dubious moral stances we want to get out of the way? Whoa, wasn't expecting the libertarian side of the political conversation to show up, but I guess here we are. Look, uh, all I gotta say is, if there's a news story about his kids having ten toes on each foot, just don't tell me about it, okay? Actually, now that I think about it, the worst lyrics of this year have been less political and more psychosexual. This guy wants to bang his cousin, Doja Cat's into non-consensual race play with the public, and even Jay Electronica's hang-up seemed to stem from a rich chick he couldn't secure the bag with. And, oh no, we're at number one now. Which can only mean one thing. Drake and his fetish for cringy wordplay about lesbians! Are any y'all into girls like I am lesbian? Yeah, say that you a lesbian girl, me too. Well, let's see what he's got in store for us this time. Those guys were never gangy. Those guys are in a strange place. Say you started dating girls now. Say it to me with a straight face. Oh God! The cringe! It hurts! It hurts! Jesus Christ, how does he keep finding a way to scrape under the bottom of this barrel? I feel like I'm by cause you're one of the guys, girl. Okay, that one wasn't even fucking trying. And what's annoying is, it's just another I'm a lesbian too line, but it's even more stupid when you think about it. Cause like, for him to say that he feels bi when he's with a woman, it's just the doofiest way of wording it. Cause it's like, oh, she's like a dude, but this is the closest to me a straight dude will ever get to being bi. It's so dumb. And I know it's intended as just a stupid reference to how cool she is with his clique, but after the corny one right before it, plus the real rock-headed ones from Loverboy, he makes lame lesbian jokes so much, I'm starting to think he really does enjoy the shame of it. And, and I've been non-consensually participating in this kink, haven't I? Oh, oh god, oh god, it makes too much sense! Ever since the lesbianist line, he's been like, Thank you for ripping on my bad lyrics, sir, may I have another? Thank you for ripping on my bad lyrics, sir, may I have another? Damn it, Drake! Keep your embarrassing fetishes between you and your OnlyFans models like a normal person! Well, that's the episode. Leave a like if you like because it helps, comment if you have something to say because it helps even more, and hit the subscribe and the bell because that's what helps the most. And if you want to support the show, of course, that's ko-fi.com slash rapcritic for one-time donations, and patreon.com slash rapcritic for ongoing donations, where you can see episodes early and join the RC Discord to chat with me and fellow fans. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you next year. Peace!